All right, so this is a screencast on terminal velocity and um, interpreting motion graphs. So we're going to use the example of a skydiver falling out of a plane. So here's our plane, here's our skydiver. And we're going to say the skydiver has a mass of 75 kgs. So initially when he jumps out of the plane, let's take uh, acceleration due to gravity as 10 meters per second squared. That means his force accelerating him down is going to be equal to his weight, which is 750 newtons. But just as he jumps out of the plane and he initially starts to accelerate, there's going to be some air resistance acting against him. And we we'll say at this point, the force of air resistance is 5 newtons. So when we want to work out his acceleration, we know from uh, Newton's second law that the net force is going to determine the acceleration. So the net force in this case is 750 down minus 5 up minus 5 because uh, 5 is in the opposite direction. That gives us a net force of 745 newtons. So the sum of the force is equal to mass times acceleration, therefore we can calculate acceleration as the net force over the mass, and that gives us 9.93 meters per second squared, so slightly less than 10 meters per second squared because uh, of that air resistance acting against them. If there was no air resistance, this acceleration would have come out at exactly 10 meters per second squared. So then we take him at some new position down here. The force accelerating him down hasn't changed. His mass hasn't changed, gravity hasn't changed, so his weight hasn't changed. So the force accelerating him down is still 750 newtons, but the force acting up against him is now increased to 100 newtons. Why? Because as his velocity increases, the rate at which the air is pushing past him also increases. So the frictional forces of the air acting against him, in other words, the air resistance, also increases. So in other words, when you increase the velocity, the force of air resistance increases. So at this moment in time now, his net force is going to be uh, some lower value. So 750 minus 100 this time for air resistance gives us 650 newtons. And therefore, his acceleration, if we work it out again, is going to be some lower value, 8.67 meters per second squared. So we'll take him at this new point down here again. His velocity will have increased to some point, but... The force accelerating him down hasn't changed, it's still just his weight. And we'll say now at this point, his velocity has increased so much that the force of air resistance increases all the way to 750 newtons. And something important happens at this point. If we find the net force acting on him, it equals to zero newtons. There are no forces acting on him. Remember, an object that has no net force acting on it is either at rest or at constant velocity. So he's reached constant velocity. In other words, he's reached a point of zero acceleration. We can check that, and we find that it's true. So if he's traveling at constant velocity, that means he, he can't get any faster. He can't accelerate anymore. So we call this his terminal velocity. This is the fastest speed he can travel at. And then we're going to say he opens his parachute. So he opens up his parachute. His weight force remains the same, still just 750 newtons. But what happens to the force of air resistance? Well, now it dramatically increases. So let's say the force of air resistance increases to 800, sorry, 1,800 newtons at its current velocity. So now we have a net force in the opposite direction. So we get a net force of minus 1,050 newtons. The minus tells us that the net force is in an upward direction. So the acceleration is also going to be in an upward direction. Acceleration is acting in the opposite direction to his velocity, so therefore it's going to be slowing him down. It's going to be deceleration. Remember, negative acceleration does not always mean deceleration. You get deceleration when the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the velocity. So, we work out his acceleration. It's minus 14 meters per second squared. So that's going to cause him to slow down, right? So what happens as he slows down to the force of air resistance? Well, the force of air resistance will also decrease. Remember, the force of air resistance depends on the velocity. So the force of air resistance will decrease through 1,500 newtons, 1,000 newtons, and eventually till the point where it reaches 750 newtons. And again, what happens at this point? Well, the sum of the forces is equal to zero newtons again. So his acceleration is also equal to zero meters per second squared, which means he'll be traveling at constant velocity, but this new constant velocity will be lower than the initial constant velocity that he reached earlier on. So he's reached two terminal velocities during his travel and eventually then he'll hit the ground. So let's look at what this looks like on a motion graph.
So we'll take a displacement time graph first. Remember, small s is for displacement, not speed. So we think about how the displacement changes throughout the motion. He's jumping from the lane, and he's moving in the same direction all the time towards the earth. So his displacement is never going to change direction. So in this case, we want to say down is positive. Okay. His displacement will continue to increase, will always increase throughout the motion, because he's always moving towards the earth. Until he hits the ground, his displacement will not stop increasing. So let's think about how it increases initially. Well, in the first part, he's accelerating. So what does acceleration look like on the displacement time graph? Have a think about that. And uh, if you're watching this at home, try to sketch what you think the graph will look like. So the first part um, of the graph will look like this. And if you're not sure what your graph should look like, think about how the gradient of the line is changing throughout the motion that you've drawn. So think about what the gradient of a displacement time graph gives you, first of all. The gradient of a displacement time graph gives you the velocity. And how do you find the gradient of a curve at different points? Well, you find a tangent at a given point, and then you find the gradient of that tangent. So if I pick this point down here, for example, and I draw a rough tangent to the curve at that point, then the gradient of that tangent will give me the velocity at that point. If I take another point along the curve here, and I draw a sort of a rough tangent at that point, I can see just by looking at it that the gradient of my second tangent is greater than the gradient of my first tangent. In other words, the velocity at the second point is greater than the velocity at the first point. So that confirms my belief that this shape represents acceleration. It represents increasing velocity because the gradient of the line is increasing. Okay, so if this uh, portion of the line represents increasing velocity, what's the next stage in his journey? Well, remember we said he accelerates for a time, but then eventually he reaches a point where his acceleration will equal to zero. So in other words, he'll have constant velocity. What does constant velocity look like in a displacement time graph? Well, constant velocity means that the gradient of this portion of the line shouldn't change at all. So the velocity or the gradient will remain constant. In other words, it'll be a straight line region. So this straight line region represents his terminal velocity. Then he opens his parachute. So now he needs to decelerate. Okay. In other words, we want him to slow down. So we want his velocity to start to decrease. So what will that look like? Well, his velocity is still going to be positive because he's still traveling down. We said down was positive. So the gradient of any line that we draw has to be a positive gradient. So if the velocity is decreasing in this portion, then the curve needs to represent decreasing velocity. So it'll look like this. And again, if you're doing this at home, you can pause the video and just check that the gradient of that curve actually does decrease as you move through different points on the curve. And then what'll happen? So eventually he'll reach a new terminal velocity, so we need a new straight line region. But if we look at the straight line region right here, compared to this straight line region down here, then we can see that the gradient of this is less than the gradient of this straight line. And that makes sense because this is a new lower terminal velocity, which you can see on the previous page. And then what will happen? Eventually he'll hit the ground and his displacement will stop increasing. It won't go to zero, it just stops increasing. So this is our displacement versus time graph for the journey. So now what if we wanted to plot a velocity versus time graph? So we have velocity on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. Well, over the first part of his journey, his velocity is going to increase because he's accelerating. But the rate at which he's accelerating decreases. Remember, as he falls and his air resistance increases, his acceleration decreases. So let's think about what the gradient of the line that we draw on this graph is going to give us. The gradient of a velocity time graph gives us the acceleration. So we need to draw a line 
with a gradient that starts out big and slowly decreases. In other words, it's going to be a curve because it's not constant acceleration, it's decreasing acceleration. So if you're working at home, pause the video and try to sketch that portion of the graph yourself. Okay, so hopefully you sketch something like this. You can see initially it almost looks straight, but it's actually slowly decreasing. And if you check the gradient at a point down here, draw a tangent, it'll be some line like this. And check the gradient at this point, it'll be some line with a flatter or lower gradient. So that confirms that the acceleration has decreased. And it decreases until he reaches a terminal velocity. Or in other words, a constant velocity. So what does constant velocity look like on a velocity time graph? Again, maybe pause your video and have a go at sketching that. Well, constant velocity just means that the velocity isn't increasing, it's staying at the same rate. So it'll be a flat part on the graph like this. What's the next thing that happens? He opens his parachute. So now his velocity is going to rapidly decrease. So again, try to sketch what that looks like on your graph. So we need a rapid reduction in velocity over a short amount of time. So it's going to look something like this. And then what happens? He reaches some new terminal velocity, some new lower terminal velocity. So that'll be another flat straight line region until he hits the ground, at which point his velocity goes to zero. So the last type of graph we have to do is an acceleration time graph. So let's think about how his acceleration changes. What was his acceleration at the start of the journey when he jumped out of the plane? It was 10 meters per second squared, exactly 10 meters per second squared. But what happened to that acceleration over time? As air resistance increased, the acceleration decreased until it reached zero. So if we plot what that looks like on our graph, we're going to have something like this. It's going to start out over here at 10 meters per second squared, and then it's going to reduce to zero. While he's at terminal velocity, the entire time he's at terminal velocity, the acceleration remains at zero. So that's going to be this portion along here. So throughout this period in time, the acceleration is zero. What happens when he opens his parachute? There's a change in direction of acceleration. In other words, acceleration becomes negative. So have a go, pause the video, and maybe try to plot the next part of the graph if you can. So if the acceleration is changing direction, becoming negative, that's going to happen over a very short amount of time as well. So it's going to very quickly become negative to some new higher value, a higher but negative value. And then what happens? As his velocity starts to decrease, the force of air resistance also decreases until he reaches a new lower terminal velocity. And again, a terminal velocity is acceleration will be zero. So this will reduce back to zero. And it will remain at zero until he eventually touches the ground. So this screencast is an example that explains terminal velocity, the principle of terminal velocity. But more importantly, it shows how we can construct and interpret distance time graphs, or rather displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. So what you need to do is maybe re-watch this again, examine what's happening with the skydiver at different points throughout his journey, and try to relate all those different points to the different parts of these three graphs to totally understand them. And you should be able to interpret any motion time graph and explain what is happening in the motion based on the graph. The important things to remember are what does the gradient of your graph give you first of all. Okay, so the gradient of a displacement time graph gives you the velocity, and the gradient of a velocity time graph gives you the acceleration. The other important thing is to think about what the area under a graph gives you. So the area under our, our displacement time graph doesn't actually give us anything useful, but the area under our velocity time graph gives us the displacement, or the change in displacement. The area under our acceleration time graph gives us the change in velocity. Not the instantaneous velocity, but the change in velocity over that time. Okay, so as I said, uh, have a look through this again and make sure that you can understand the different parts of the motion in terms of the skydiver and what's happening throughout his journey and these three different graphs.